stocks rebounding a bit from yesterday's losses ahead of this week's Fed meeting. It's coming as the dramatic declines in China starting to impact U.S. investors. Since June 12, Chinese stock losses on U.S. exchanges have erased nearly $40 billion in wealth. Fair to say the phrase being said and heard most often in Chinese economic circles at the moment would be Wiao Ching Wong. In other words, don't panic. Easier said than done when you have a stock market fading faster than hopes for a new Duggar reality show. Add to that, there is no one there to keep the peace and reassure everyone over and over again. Wiao Ching Wong. The realities on this and more in English. Welcome back, veteran economist, University of Maryland professor of business and national columnist Peter Morisi, joined by veteran economist and author of The American Dream Under Fire, Steve Beeman. Peter, let me begin with you on this. Is it fair to say that what we have here after the sharpest one-day crash in eight years, that these are communist party leaders simply just flailing about with no idea what they're doing when it comes to a capitalistic society? Well, when it comes to the stock market, they're completely naive. They went out and encouraged the public to buy on margin. You know, a good deal of uh, Chinese shares are not in open trading. They're held by state-owned enterprises. They're held by the enterprises themselves. They've never been issued and so forth. So it's a thin market uh, in terms of how much of the companies are actually out there. But it's very volatile because the trading volume is 10 times larger than in the United States, you know, in terms of the turnover of publicly held shares each day. Uh, and they simply don't know what they're doing. The good news is they won't let us trade there. Most of us don't own any stock there. And as a consequence, it has very little effect on Western markets. And Western markets finally today figured that out. All right. But let me ask you, though, about the Western markets here. You say that you don't think there's going to be that much impact when it comes to us and the other free markets. But there's others around the world, though, Peter, who claim that it will eventually trickle down some way and we will get hurt. Where's the truth? Well, there is trickle down in the sense that the Chinese economy is changing as much as it's slowing and it's using less natural resources. So places like Canada and Australia that have been hitting it big there and say U.S. forest products manufacturers are affected. But that would have happened even if we didn't have this Chinese stock market meltdown. The other thing is their economy is largely isolated from this casino. Uh, the ordinary people don't have the kinds of IRAs and KIOs and connection between the stock market and what they buy every day that Americans do. So it won't even affect that much Chinese growth. So I think on, on whole, uh, this is a humorous event uh, from the point of view of a good old-fashioned free market capitalist. I just love watching these fools try to do a stock market. I have been waiting for someone to say that for months now, for someone just to say, thank goodness we can now laugh at the Chinese. And Peter, good for you. You're the first one to say it here. Steve, let me come to you on this at the Wall Street Journal had, where they said that the big deal here is there's no Alan Greenspan. There's nobody out in front to try and slow this down and put some sort of, some sort of calm in this market. Do you agree with that or would it make any difference at all? I kind of agree with it, although I think the numbers are more problematic than Greenspan faced. The reality is the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, and the consumer confidence in this country is waning because they hear so much pessimism coming out of China, Europe, uh, and all over the Western Hemisphere. And so that confidence does slow spending down, which slows employment growth down and gets us into that deflationary cycle the Fed is so worried about. Now, you mentioned the U.S. consumer confidence. It's now at its lowest level since September 2014. But it can't just be China, though, here, Steve. There's got to be a whole lot more involved here. Oh, Ed, as you and I have talked, the European situation with Greece is heavy on people's minds. The valuations of the markets are heavy on people's minds. Home sales are being affected by a fear of rising interest rates. So everywhere the investor turns or the consumer turns, they see red flags. And it's starting to bear out in those confidence numbers. All right, Peter, to you. Here comes some other money news here. The CEO of Duncan Brands, Nigel Travis, in an interview with CNN, said the increase of the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour will affect small businesses, small franchises. He wishes the industry could have been part of the wage discussions. Here's what he said. We think that a debate needs to take place about how to tackle income inequality, but this is absolutely uh, outrageous. The increase is 71% that's proposed over three years. 30 seconds. Outrageous? Is that the right word to use? Absolutely. But both parties or both sides are outrageous. The Republicans want to keep it at seven and a quarter, which is abysmally low. And Democrats want to take it all the way to 15, which is absolutely foolish. In reality, they're only targeting big chains like McDonald's. And to some extent, what this is is an anti-McDonald's and anti-Walmart law. 
in New York City, for example, and it's terrible economics, and it's going to blow up in their faces. They're going to be able to rig wage rates about as well as the Chinese can rig markets. 20 seconds to you, Steve. A big blow up in charge. You agree with that? Yeah, I think it's a big mistake. We have technological changes that are going to make these jobs more attractive to technology than they are to human beings. And so the higher you force that rate up and rapidly, the more likely companies are just to replace those jobs. So this is not going to have the result those people want. And I think it's going to hurt the low end of the economic spectrum. And remember, Peter Morisi is the guy who says, we out Ching Wong to all our friends in China while he is laughing at the same time. I knew, <laughs> I knew someone was going to say it in Morisi. I knew you'd be the guy to do it. Peter, Steve Beeman, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you folks again. All right, the reality of a campaign based on hate, why a certain White House visitor has people up in arms, and nothing is over until we decide it is, next on The Hardline.